Hello, welcome. <clears throat> I guess it's time to start um, Unit 17C as part of our Physics 211 course. And today's lecture is about Doppler shifts. <clears throat> our Doppler shift comes from, really if you get down to it, it comes from the relative motion of the source and observer and their effect on the uh, <clears throat> and their effect on the um, wavelength hence frequency or the apparent wavelength because remember we're switching to different frames of the uh, wavelength. And when you go through that analysis, as you saw somewhat in the lecture, uh, you find this question with the little O subscripts, observer speed, observer frequency, source frequency, source speed, and this V here is the speed of sound or speed of the wave. It turns out this works for more than just sound. It also works for um, <clears throat> for light that will get blue shifted or red shifted. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, the speed of light is always the same. You know that number? It's that nice one: two nine nine seven nine two four five eight meters per second. The speed of sound in <clears throat> in uh, air is given by that formula that. Uh, we talked about a lecture two ago. It's temperature dependent, uh, 331 meters per second at uh, zero C. <clears throat> now this formula consists of a scaling of the source frequency as seen by the observer uh, by plus or minus the observer on the top and plus or minus the source on the bottom. <clears throat> now, what you notice is that if the two sign, if the two objects are getting closer together, right? There are one here and one here, and they're getting closer together. It doesn't matter which one is moving, both moving, both moving, you know, one moving faster than the other. If they're getting closer together, <clears throat> this frequency is going to be higher. If they're getting further apart, or one moving, the other moving, both moving, uh, one moving the head. Uh, both moving in the same direction, but the one in front going faster. Any of those cases, it'll be a lower frequency over here. <clears throat> and so the way that works out with the pluses and minuses is the top signs are it's towards the other object, and the minus uh, and the bottom signs here are the lower signs for leaving, right? You know, top towards lower leaving. Just to remember it's plus and minus on the top and minus plus on the bottom. The reason why it's reversed, of course is that a big number on the bottom makes the thing smaller, a big number on the top makes it bigger. And that's how you get the reverse sign. So as you're leaving, you get a red shift, which is lower frequency. Red is the wavelength idea, and the visible uh, wavelengths is where we think about that. Or a blue shift to higher frequency if they're going towards this net effect. <clears throat> that's what you have to remember. <clears throat> And then it's a matter of using the formula, usually, picking out the problem, what these things are, choosing the correct signs, and there you go. Noticing which is zero when one of these is zero, which one isn't, that's going to uh, tell you which way to go. <clears throat> okay, so let's then do an example. And the example we'll do is um, one with a Doppler ball, and this is just emits a tone, and as you swing it around, you hear the frequency go up, down, up, down as it's approaching or leaving you. Now, it turns out the video of that uh, demonstration doesn't really do much for, uh, well, the, let's say the audio quality is poor enough that you can't really tell what's going on. And so what I've done instead is I've uh, uh, 
got a different um, a uh, where is that thing? <clears throat> I've got a different uh, um, uh, movie, one that um, has a get this out of the way. Um, has a Doppler shift from a car moving. And so we can, uh, I'll play this for you. And you probably heard this before, but this is the Doppler effect. This is coming towards us. It's going to have a higher pitch. It's right next to us. So that's not moving toward or away. You'll hear the actual pitch of the horn with the driver's hearing. And as it goes past us, uh, you'll hear a lower frequency. Okay. Okay, so that is uh, more or less what we're thinking about. Things is the changing frequency as it's going past you. And so we'll go then back to our camera here and, <clears throat> and can go about this. Now, in the one we just saw, the vehicle passing by pushing its horn, okay, you heard the source frequency. <clears throat> Only when it was not getting closer further, it's right next to us. And the observer was not moving, we weren't moving, so this term is zero. <clears throat> and then the source was either towards us, top sign, or away from us, bottom sign. Uh, depending on where that car was as it went past us. <clears throat> so let's, with that uh, in mind, uh, we'll um, <clears throat> solve this problem. So a frequency of this, that's the Doppler ball, and it emits. So this is the source frequency. It swung around the circle at one certain it's moving toward the student at 12 meters per second. Okay, so that's towards is top <clears throat> sign. And the student here, the student, that's our observer. And what frequency does the student hear? Student here, F, observe. The speed of the sound in the room is this. So that's the speed of sound, that's the V. So we go back and we copy down our, our little equation here. <clears throat> now the observer is not moving, so it doesn't matter uh, which sign we use there. So we use uh, frequency observer as frequency of the source. It's uh, V, well, I might as well take this plus, plus zero. And on the bottom, it's V, now it's the top sign, so it's a minus, it's because it's going towards us. And we should get a frequency that's bigger than this room because it's coming toward us. And if it's bigger than this, you can already wipe those two out. They're not going to be important. <clears throat> and then the, uh, then this is the magnitude of the V source. So I wrote out with the magnitude so I know not to change that sign. And now you start uh, uh, plugging in some numbers here. And uh, uh, this is, um, <clears throat> so that's uh, 12 meters per second. This is 340 meters per second. You can already see it's going to be a small effect because 340 over, this will be 328, is pretty close to 1. The source frequency is our 780 hertz. And uh, well, you just plug in. And what you get is you get um, 808.5 hertz, which happens to be answer D. So you see, the really the thing you have to do, just like many of the problems we have in this course, is you have to uh, say, oh, this is a Doppler problem. That's kind of easy because it says Doppler ball. But uh, you can pick that out because we're talking about uh, things moving towards, away from each other, and frequencies. It's a good sign. It's a problem like a Doppler. 
And then you've got to determine which signs to use, plus or minus, the top ones or the bottom ones, for the observer, putting in zeros if you have them, and for the other one, in this case the source is moving, and then you plug in and you get it. Sometimes we'll ask for this, sometimes we'll ask for that, sometimes we'll ask for various other things, but it's the same equation. Once you get it set it up like this, put in your zeros, and you can manipulate it as you need to with algebra to solve it. <clears throat> so we won't do a whole lot of these, but I did want to do one where there was more than one thing moving. <clears throat> and here we have it. This is a sort of two things going in the same direction. So a car is traveling north at um, uh, 25 meters per second. <clears throat> so uh, let's draw a picture here. We'll assume this is north is up. And we've got the car up here. It's driving along um, at uh, 25 meters per second. And the driver of the car. So this is the this is the car, and that's the observer. So this then is the observer. The um, Ambulance is uh, behind the car, traveling north also. So here's our ambulance. It's got a big uh, thing in the back here, and uh, a cab, and probably going to have a red cross over here, right? and flashing light. <clears throat> and that's uh, moving up. <clears throat> at um, 35 meters per second. And this is the source. And this is the, uh, the, the ambulance or the source. <clears throat> okay, now we have to think uh, which signs to use. This is towards the car. So use top sign. And this one is away from the ambulance. Like leaving it. It's actually not leaving it. It's going to be passive. Um, <clears throat> but um, that's the lower sign. And so we now can write down our question over here. The observed frequency is the source frequency times uh, V, now we have the observer and that's supposed to be the lower sign. And the lower sign is a minus if you're on the top. <clears throat> and the top sign on the bottom is also a minus. And <clears throat> so notice this is gonna make the frequency smaller. And this is gonna make it higher. Which one's gonna win? Well, that depends upon you know, which one's going faster? So let's see. You plug it in. We've got uh, 1500 hertz, right? That's our, that's our source. Emits, that's the source. Driver of the car hears, hears the oh, that's a frequency, this F source. <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, ambulance. That's V source, and this is the car, uh, so that's V observer. So now I think we've got everything else, and this is just V. And so it's 25, uh, 1500 hertz, 340 minus 25 over 340 plus 35. These are all in meters per second over meters per second, which is going to cancel out, of course. And you plug in the numbers, you get 1549 hertz. And you say, hmm, that is bigger than 1500 hertz. They must be getting closer together. And that's true, right? This is catching up to that one at 10 meters per second. So they ought to get closer together. So this ought to go up, and it does, just like it should. So that's, yeah, it's, it's 
it's hard to get too much more complicated than this with a Doppler question, but if you're careful about draw your picture, <clears throat> find your source and observer variables, get them all identified, determine which sign to use, put it in, run the numbers. Your algebra if you have to do four times. Okay, so that is that one. <clears throat> and there isn't a whole lot <clears throat> uh, else to do with the, uh, with the Doppler effect here. So we're going to move on to beats. And so this takes a while to draw, so I preview it. So we have a beat frequency. And a beat frequency really comes from as interference in time with two waves, right? And interference we'll get to a little bit more in, uh, in the next lecture, but it really comes down to a matter of, okay, just add everything you have, right? So if you take this and you add it to this, when they're equal plus and minus, you get zero. Right? They're both positive, you get something big. Both zero, you're going to get zero. If they're both somewhere in between, you get something in between. And every time you get the equals top and bottom is where you hit the zero point. Now, as these get further, these two are close together. You're getting almost twice the height here that you did on e in either one of those. Uh, and over here, it's almost gets to that. But then as you get further apart here, right, you get more of this region where one's negative and the other's positive, and that makes it smaller. And finally, they get completely out of phase. So whenever one's positive, the other's negative. So it drops down, gets smaller and smaller until you get almost zero. So if you take this over a, a longer frequency band, <clears throat> well, you see the things that look like this. And here's the underlying uh, sound. And it's large, it gets small near zero, then it gets big again, then small and big again, small. And if you look at this red line here, the envelope, sort of the loudness level, it, uh, the frequency here gets louder and quieter, louder and quieter, louder, and that's called the beat. That louder and quieter, louder and quieter. Not the tone itself, just the louder and quieter, louder and quieter part. That's what's called the beat. And the beat frequency uh, is simply given by the difference between uh, frequency one minus frequency two. That is basically our equation for the beat frequency. And so uh, as we um, uh, are kind of preparing for that, let me come over here and, uh, and move over and we'll go to uh, another example where we'll actually hear the beats. Okay, here's our beats. So in this case, we have two tuning forks, one over here doesn't have any weights, and one over here has some weights on it. And so I believe these are an A sound at, uh, it's either 220 or 440 hertz, but we'll, we'll see, maybe they'll say in the video. Uh, but those weights he's adding on the top, that's changing the frequency just a little bit. And that change of frequency is enough to give us the beats. So it'll come up here in a minute. Okay, we're in, okay, here we go. You hear that? When, the, when you heard that sound, I gotta put this, play this first part over again. Hear that? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's the beat. And that's, they're close when those things are up on the end. When he moves them down, the frequencies get further apart from each other. And as they get further apart from each other, it's a little, it's much higher beat frequency because the frequencies are now further apart from each other than they were before. And that's basically how we get to V.
the feet. And while I'm here, I want to show you one more um, example. Of these are what's called Ames tubes. Ames tubes are a little bit of resonance, which we'll talk about in the very next system, and a little bit so of, of beats. A lot of lag on this, but you hear it get much louder when he puts it behind that tuning fork or behind that aims tube. When that sound goes up, if the video is actually in sync with the sound on it, you'd hear the um, you'd hear the thing get a lot louder, and that's because this aims tube is actually resonant. It amplifies or builds up that frequency. Yeah, you hear much to heard that get loud. When it gets loud, that one's right behind. I haven't gotten to the beats yet. That'll come up. Right now, it's more resonance, which we'll do. But I have plenty of demonstrations for that. Hear those beats? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's be three hertz apart. And think of those getting louder and quieter, about three hertz. Okay, the video on this isn't working, but I think hope you heard the, the sound. And if he, if he actually drove this, which is at uh, 580, and then the other tuning fork at 583 behind it, difference between those is three hertz, and that's the frequency of that louder and softer beat. And so <clears throat> with that, let's pop back to our camera and uh, do another example here. <clears throat> and as you can imagine, examples with beat frequencies are, are pretty simple. Uh, we could combine it with a Doppler one, because the beat frequencies you don't hear unless it gets pretty good or pretty close. And that's easy to generate close things with Doppler. So that's how they work together. So we have two tuning forks. What's the beat frequency? Okay, well, F beat is equal to uh, the difference between the two frequencies and absolute value. And so it doesn't matter which you put first because it's absolute value. So let's just put the big one first. Uh, 814 minus 812 hertz, that's two. And so our answer is two hertz. Now, one thing you might say, well, what does anyone ever use one of these uh, beat frequencies for? If you want to tune a musical instrument, it turns out that the best way to do that, say tuning a guitar, you tune one string against another where you're holding down the, the fret, <coughs> usually on the 12th, uh, to, uh, and listen for the beat frequency between the two of them. You tune it until the beat frequency gets really, really long. And then those two strings are tuned to a fraction of a hertz, right? How if, if you get it down to one hertz beat frequency, they're one hertz off being tuned. If you get better than that, then you're better than hertz. So you can get very accurate. And of course, to get an absolute standard, you take a tuning fork and listen to the beats of the tuning fork against the string being played. And again, you can get down to a fraction of hertz that way. And that's sort of the way you could do that. Anyway, that's uh, it for our lecture on, uh, <coughs> on beat frequencies. And so, uh, in fact, Doppler as well. So see you next time. And we're going to uh, finish this off.